tempting the demons. One day, his the chariot upon which he was fighting had some breakdown problem and it had to go to the workshop. Without having the chariot, you cannot fight on a battlefield because you'll have to store your weapons somewhere. And you have to stand at a higher pedestal to fight the demon who is at that height. So when the chariot was not available, Indra transformed himself into a bull. And he said, Mandhada, why don't you stand atop me and fight the demon? So the bull, the tall bull has a huge hump. So the king stood atop the bull and atop its hump and fought the demon. And of course he was victorious and the demon was vanquished in the battle. Since this king stood on the top of the hump, a hump in Sanskritam is called kaku. Since he stationed himself above the kaku, he was called kakutstha. Since Rama came in the lineage of Kakutstha, he is called Kakutstha. So, the moment Rama realized it was Indra's son, he thought, one of my ancestors is grateful to Indra because at the most needed hour, Indra transformed himself into a bull. So, my ancestor is grateful, indebted to Indra. Today, me, Rama, who is coming in the lineage of Kakutstha, if I kill Indra's son, then that gratitude will go away. So I should not kill the son of Indra, I should just minimally punish him. Since he thought gratitude is such a great virtue and a quality, he did not kill Indra's son. Why? Because he had to be grateful to Kakutstha. That is why Valmiki at that juncture says, Vadharhamapi kakutsthaha kripaya paryapalayat. So the question asked by Valmiki was Kritagyata, Kritagyavan, the one who is grateful. So all these 16 attributes, see for each attribute I have to spend one hour. I don't have that luxury. In 9 days I have to cover 19,000 shlokas. So assuming that you would have, you are all sarvajnas, and you will all know what is the meaning of the 16 attrib attributes. I am leaving it here. Now, after this question, what was the expectation of Valmiki? That there will be some other person. Because the person whom he thought Rama was, the repository of 16 auspicious attributes was not one. Because he has deserted his wife. Now, Narada had to give an answer. See, I don't know how many of you here, elderly people here, may be able to uh, relate to this. The school days, if the teacher was to say that this is the portion that I am going to cover tomorrow, to impress upon the teacher, some of the students will read those lessons the previous day and go. Because if the teacher asks the questions, you can immediately raise your hand and answer. So that is, you will raise your hand with all that enthusiasm when you know the answer beforehand. So, when the question started, Kon basmin sampratam loke gunavan kaschaviryavan The moment he started asking, Narada should have gauged that the answer is Rama. The moment Valmiki finishes all the 16 auspicious attributes, you know what Rama, uh, Narada says? Wait. I'll just tell you. He swallows, he takes some drinks a part of his saliva and then says, okay, now I'll give you an answer. Now again the commentator asks, if Narada had known that the answer was Rama, why should he not tell the answer immediately? Why should he take that little time, swallow and then say, I will tell Rama? For this the commentator says, let us go to a house. Somebody has invited, some Mahan Baba has invited us to his house. And they have prepared some sweet. You can take whichever sweet is of your state. Let us begin with Kerala. A sweet of Kerala. Chakkai? Chakka variety? I'll add a Pradaman. Then we'll go to Andhra or Telangana. Putarekulu. Putarekulu is your gateway to Vaikuntham. It has so much of ghee in it. So, it can have, you can think of Akkara Vadishil. Or you can think of Mysore Park. Puranpoli of Maharashtra. Well, Gujarat, we don't have to go for a sweet. All the dishes are sweet. So, any sweet you take. Suppose a person has 
made that sweet and is bringing that sweet closer to you even before you taste and they ask how is it it's excellent you have not even tasted the sweet but you're telling it is excellent what what will the person infer that means you're afraid of that person then only even before tasting you'll say it is very good imagine the person has given that sweet i put it inside the mouth the moment it touches my tongue i say it is good it means it is actually not good because i not even tasted that relish that sweet instead i am given that sweet i put it into my mouth <sighs> excellent so only when i relish taste will i take that little time though narada knew the answer to the question was rama he took that little time because he wanted to relish the nama of rama first and then he said ikshva kuvamsha prabhavah Ramo Nama Janai Shruta Ha The same Rama who has been loved by people is the answer to the question of yours. Why did Valmiki ask this question? Because he had concluded that Rama is not the person. Now Narada comes and says, no, no, it is Rama only. Again Narada was, uh, Valmiki was a bit confused. He went to the forest. While he had left to the forest along with the student Bharatwaja, that day apparently as he was looking to the branch of one of the trees he saw a pair of birds in the love making so he saw the male bird and the female bird and as he was relishing nature in its fullest that is when one of the birds was killed and it fell on the ground the female bird started lamenting over the death of the male bird the moment he saw this drishyam the sight he was not able to withstand the sorrow that was emanating from him he thought is this right for someone to kill one of the birds that too when they are in the process of love making and that is when he sees the hunter who had killed coming walking with that great pride in him the moment that sorrow show come sorrow as it started traveling through his a passage is um, uh, the throat that shokam turned into letters and those letters rearranged and as he opened his mouth and uttered that shokam became a shlokam shokaha shlokatvam agataha and that is when he cursed looking at the hunter मानिषाद यत्प्रतिष्ठान्त्वं अगमश्चाश्वती समाह यत्क्रांचम इतुनाद एकम अवधी ही कामोहितम् The moment he uttered this curse, he came back to his ashram and sat. Then he thought, how can a rishi like him turn angry all of a sudden? He should have controlled कामो का रिशि मन्यो का रिशि August first, eleventh. It is coming right. कामो का रिशि मन्यो का रिशि on the day of Yajurupa Karma, you have to repeat thousand eight times. I have won over anger. I have won over pleasure. Kamam, kamo, karishi, manyuma, karishi. And imagine when you are uttering this, you are asking someone, why isn't he come? Kamo, karishi, manyuma, karishi. Have you won over anger? So when Valmiki uttered this, he thought, I shouldn't have cursed that person. Then while he is wondering what has really happened, that is when Narada's father, Brahma, appears there. He says, why are you so perplexed, Valmiki? See, I have cursed that person, I shouldn't have done. Where did you curse? I said, Ma Nishada, O oh, you hunter, Yat Pratishthan, Tvam Magama Shashwati Samaha, you have crossed all the barriers. All those levels which have been put for a great person to live in this world. Yet krauncham ituna dekam. Like how you have separated one of the birds. Avadhihi kamamohitam. You too shall be separated from your consort. This is your uttering, right? Isn't this a curse, Brahmaji? Brahma said, no, no. This is not a curse. You have not understood Sanskritam properly. Ma means Mahalakshmi. Nishada means the one who stays close to Mahalakshmi. Ma Nishada means Mahavishnu. Yat Pratishthantvam Agama Shashwati Samaha. As you are born on this earth out of great compassion, 
yet kraucha mitunad ekam like how you were separated from your concert while you were born as a human who sita avadhi hi kama mohitam that particular scripture that talks about your separation shall be a great solace to the world you have all actually given a blessing valmiki valmiki then realized oh i didn't realize this was a blessing what should i do now see rama is now 41 his wife is in your ashram you start writing down the biography of rama now valmiki said see how will i know what how he was born where he was educated what he ate how did he walk how, what was his height i did not i won't know any of these details that is when brahma said don't worry all this has been recorded in the cctv camera <laughs> you open your palm you can see hasta amalakam gata like a gooseberry that can be seen very much on the palm of a person you can see what all has happened rahasyam cha prakasham cha whatever is popular in this world can also be seen rahasyam cha what has transpired just between the two will also be known to you you can see as you see you have to start writing in what format should i write now hey valmiki i introduce you to one pattern in this world which is called poetry remember in sanatana dharma valmiki ramayanam is called adi kavyam the first poetry to come in this world even before the paradise lost and paradise gained it was the first poetry ever born there are 18 types of meters used in valmiki ramayanam the most prominent meter is anushtup chandas 32 letters will be found in most of the shlokas it is called anushtup chanda so this is how your kavyam should be born and he starts writing now where does ramayanam how does he begin ramayanam there was a great king called dasharatha dasharatha was a king who was adept in riding his chariot possibly in all the 10 directions you have got north south east west north east north west south east south west probably he could even go in the z axis and the minus z axis 8 plus 2 10 dasharatha now you may be wondering how can a person go in the z axis or minus z axis right probably he was driving at a much a faster pace than most other people who could drive so when you drive beyond a certain speed people who are going in the car will also have a flight effect so he he had dasharatha so dasharatha he was called dharma raja and he had many wives see this problem of many wives many children all this will be there in our puranas many of them will come up to me and they will have a doubt sir why did he marry so many people what can i do he did not ask my permission so you have to take things as they come in shrimad ramayana and shri mahabharata he had many wives well who, who, how many were they three this is what we know but in ayodhya kandam it is said that over 260 wives of him were uh, of his were crying when sita had to go to the forest so primarily we know only three now don't ask me what are the names of the 260 that is irrelevant to us now dasharatha had a daughter her name was shanta the commentary called as govinda rajiyam while deciphering the shlokas in balakandam does make a mention of it so she was called shanta she was given an adoption to a king called as romapada of vangadesham vangadesham is current west bengal and bangladesh put together so she was given an adoption to that king that king nurtured and nourished that girl as his very own daughter and at one point in time this shanta at one point in time vangadesham did not get proper rains so the astrologers and the priests in that particular region said that the only way this country can be bestowed of copious rainfall is one when a naishtika brahmachari a great brahmachari sets his foot into this kingdom so with their encyclopedic knowledge they got to know that there was a great son born to a rishi called vibhandaka see the beauty of our scriptures is as you keep listening you should keep noting down the details because when somebody asks you outside what is the name of the sage adhe do sonnar nalla per maadri irundhudu edho sonnar ipdi dhaan so you have to remember you will have to note it down 
that is why i keep telling you there is a difference between sitting for a kacheri a concert and a discourse at the end of it i should supply question and answers to everybody should remember the names vibhandaka was the name of the rishi he lived in the western ghats of kanara region which is karnataka the place is today called kigga so this vibhandaka maharishi was bestowed with a son by the grace of god this son had an abnormal growth on his scalp this abnormal growth resembled the shringam shringam means the horn of a deer variety in deer there were many varieties and one species was called rishyam category so this rishyam category had one horn like how rhinoceros that you see it had one horn since this boy had an abnormal growth that resembled the shringam of a rishya he was called rishya shringa so this rishya shringa performed austerities atop a hill a giri rishya shringa giri became shringeri later so this son of vibhandaka called as rishya shringa was a brahmachari and if he were to come to bangladesh and there will be copious rain for this said so this lady shanta she goes with different sweets from bengal now you may be wondering how do you know sweets were taken this is mentioned in the samskritam commentary what will be the sweets they have not mentioned we know champakiri shondesh roshugullo gure roshugullo chana paish all this was taken from the vangadesham to kigga and the moment he was attracted by the sweets he started following her the moment he set his foot in vangadesham there was copious rainfall the shanta was married to rishishringa so in other words dasharatha's daughter shanta and dasharatha's son in law rishishringa were great people now dasharatha was a great king he had good ministers with him दीर्घदर्शी महातेज पौरजान पद प्रिय तस्याध्यासंग्रह यहा मनुर्मतेज लोक से पिरक्षित तथा दशरथो राज लोक से पिरक्षित वाल्मीकि Ramayana is one of the scriptures that has been transcreated in most of the world languages. Even before a transcreated work such as Kamba Ramayana could be born in Tamil, there was an earlier version of Ramayana before Kamba Ramayana in a language which was regional but not regional to India. That was the Javanese Ramayana called as the Kakawin Ramayana. So even if you go to the islands of Bali today, there is a beautiful dance called as the Kechak dance, which is performed every day. Now, here there is a verse which comes from Kambaramayanam as to how the king was. Ta ivokum man bil tava mukum tava paya pilse ivokum mun nindru voshel mari ivokum niral no ivokum yenni marindu ivokum no nangu kedi ayapu dalari ivokum yavar kumanna. He was extremely adept. In those days, if there was a king, the king had to be an intellectual. The king had to be a great vira because he was the one who had to go and defend his kingdom. He had to be a judge. Today we have separated all these powers, right? There is a separate army, there is a separate judiciary, and then there will be people who will take care of the administrative tasks. The same person who is ruling the country cannot go and fight. जुडीशियन But in those days, it used to happen. Impossible things could also happen in those days. Nevertheless, Rishi Shringa was invited to Ayodhya. Why? Because Dasharatha wanted to have sons. Now, now don't feel that he was um, um, male chauvinist. All these things will come. He already had a girl. Now he wanted to have a son. Let us give some benefit of doubt to these kings. They immediately say you are running a campaign called "Beti Bachao, Beti Padao." Why should he have only "Beta"? 
See, in Sanskrit, there is a saying, Punnarakam trayati iti putraha. The one who prevents his fathers and forefathers from going to a narakam, a hill, called as put, is called putraha. Why is a son called putra? Because by his birth, his forefathers won't go to that narakam called punnarakam trayati iti putraha. On a lighter vein, one acharya asked, why should the putraha be called putraha? Because the fathers and forefathers don't go, have to go to a hell called as put because they experience that hell after the son is born. So he is called putraha. Nevertheless, now comes the question, why should putri not be included? Because in grammar, Sanskritam grammar, if there is a word of the same category, but it has one extra matra, putra, Putri, I go for that one extra second, right? So Putri becomes a subset of Putra. So wherever Putra is mentioned, Putri is also denoted. How? Dasharatha performed Putra Kama Ishti. So he had sons. What did Janaka perform? He too performed Putra Kama Ishti and he had a daughter. So he did not perform Putri Kama Ishti. He performed Putra Kama Ishti. So Putra becomes the superset for the subset putri in Sanskrit grammar. Now, he wanted to perform the yajnam, but it is said in Shastram that the sins uh, that the praja has accrued will go to the king. So generally, kings will be afflicted with many diseases because when they take up for Pattabhishekam, the, the oath that they have to take is, I will not allow my praja to perform any kind of wrong deeds. If they perform as a punishment of what they have performed, I will take up the papam, says Shastram. So kings did not survive for many many years in those days. So Dasharatha, in order to get his papams annihilated, he had to perform a yajnam called as Ashwamedham. And it was performed for one year. Sambatsareti for one year, Dasharatha performed Ashwamedham. For that one year, he has to sit by the Yagavatika. Then who will take care of the administration? He gave away the administrative powers to Vasishtha for one year. And he performed the Yajyam. How was Ashwamedham performed? If you get into details, that horse, the sacrificial horse is at the end of it sacrificed. So then there will be three golden needles drawn on the horse. To get into the details of Ashwamedham itself is a different lecture that is being brought together in Brahma Sutra Bhashyam. So three lines will be drawn. And the queen who desires the progeny has to sleep next to the dead horse for one night. And then you will have to pray to get good progeny. This was a custom for Ashwamedham. After Ashwamedham, there was a Ishti performed. Putra Kama Ishti. Ishti is a Shrauta Bhagam. So if you desire Putra, Putra Kama Ishti, it is performed as per Atharvana Vedam. And this was done based on Shukla Yajur Vedam. Remember all these details. It is not found in Ramayana. It is found in Ramayana's commentary called as Govindarajiyam. So after the Ashwamedham and Putra Kama Ishti, a Yajna Purusha had to arise. Now who is this Yajna Purusha? There goes a shlokam. Krishnam Raktam Baradharam Rakta Asyam Dundu Bhiswanam Snigdha Darya Hakshatanujam Ashrushra Vaprabara Murdhajam Shubha Lakshana Sampannam Divya Bharana Bhushitam Shaira Shringa Samutsedyam Dhriptasha Dula Vikramam It is said, a Yajna Purusha Aros. Who is this Yajna Purusha? He was red hue. And he carried a golden pot with a silver lid. Krishna Jambudana Priyam, he had a golden pot with a Rajatasrajam. He had a silver lid on it. And then there was Payasam in it. Why golden pot with a silver lid? Because this gold is Auram, A-U. What is silver? Argentum, A-G. Silver has the property to expel heat, to retain heat. That is why if you look at some of our ancestors, they will have food on silver plates because the heat of that food will stay on your plate. Whereas gold has the property to expel heat. That is why we wear gold jewellery. Your body heat will be expelled through the gold. Since the payasam had to be in a lukewarm condition, neither too hot nor neither too cold, it was a golden pot with a silver lid. 
Now this piasm emerged. Now the moment that piasm emerged, this piasm had to be distributed amongst the wives of Dasharatha. Principal wives. Kaushalya. Kaushalya. Sumitra. Kaikeyi. And the other order is Kaushalya. Kaikeyi. Sumitra. Which order is correct? Some order, sir. You finish the lecture. Huh? Second one, which is Kaushalya, Kaikai, Sumitra. Right? What is, the, what is the other order? Kaushalya, Sumitra, Kaikai. The problem is not Kaushalya. The other two only they have a problem. Correct? Remember, Ramayanam itself doesn't come to the conclusion who is next. In certain places, Sumitra is referred to as Madhyamamba, the middle mother. In certain places, Kaikai is referred to as Madhyamamba. There is a great speaker in the Kannada tradition. Kannada Matadu Ridara Ali. Barnaji Govinda Acharya Ruvanta Dodda Pravachana Karta. He was one of the greatest speakers. He used to even ask a question. What is the order of the children? Rama, Bharata, Lakshmana, Shatrukna. But where is it mentioned that Lakshmana was born after uh, Bharata? We say that Bharata was born on the day of Pushya Nakshatram. Next comes Aslesha Nakshatram, Lakshmana was born. But then he raises a question, who told you that this year Lakshmana could have been born in Aslesha Nakshatram, next year Pushya Nakshatram Bharata could have been born. So there is a place in Ramayanam where Bharata falls at the feet of Lakshmana. If Bharata was elder to Lakshmana, it should have not happened. So he raises a question. So there are many, many debates, intellectual debates that happen based on Ramayanam. Now, I won't confuse you any further. Here, this piasm emerged. Now, traditionally in our lectures, all our Acharyas will say, Piasam mandudam, ada kudutadam, ada palginadam, kodanda porandudam. So, the piasam was given, it was distributed, the queens consumed. As a result, children were born. If you tell this way, your children will refuse to have piasam. <laughs> If you drink piasam, you will get children in a day. Remember that Ramayanam does describe Rama's life history in detail. But it may not end up describing every event that you want it to describe. There is no place where Rama is mentioned to have brushed his teeth. So can we conclude that Rama did not brush his teeth at all? Certain details, Valmiki will give it to the intellect of the readers to assume that you all know Rama would have brushed his teeth, he would have taken bath. Correct. Similarly, children were born the way children are born on earth. So what is this piasam? Piasam was like a herbal medical concoction. If they had certain ailments in their body, both the queen or the king, that was preventing them from getting pregnant. So this was a medical treatment concoction which was given to eradicate all that and then they will have children. So all this will not be mentioned. They will say Payasam was given, children were born. So we will have to add all these intermediate steps to make it more logical. I am not sounding so logical because I want to force it to be logical. No, it is logical. So this Payasam was distributed. Now there is a big question here. You have to listen to this carefully. How was the payasam distributed? I will tell about the shlokas. Kausalya yei narapatihi payasardham dadau dada. Payasardham. Ardham means how much? Half. Ardhaha? Ardhaha? That is padam. Padam means quarter. In Tamil Nadu, quarter has a different meaning. Uh, ardhaha. What is Ardhaha? Half. So, very rarely in Sanskritam, you will have one word appearing in two genders. Ardham is Napumsakalingam. Ardhaha is Pullingam. We can use Ardhaha and Ardham. When Ardham means half or slightly less than half. 49.5 is Ardham. 50 or slightly more than 50 is Ardhaha. So, if a person is giving me food and I say, Padi Kudungo, give me half and that person is giving me that half, 
Based on the quantity in those days, they will decide the lingam. Either it is ardham or ardaha. So, pious ardham, it was 49.5 or 49.9. This piasam, 50, close to 50%. Kausalya yei narapati, he, he gave it to Kausalya. Ardhal ardham, half of that half, remaining half is 25%. Chapi Sumitra Yei Naradhipaha. It was given to Sumitra. What is remaining? Another 25%. Kaike Yei Chavasishtardham. Half of that remaining portion. How much is it? 12.5 was given to Kaike Yei. Dadau Putra Artha Karanad. Look at the words that Valmiki uses. He says, he gave this piasam to Kaikeyi, desiring a son. Why was the Putra Karanath not mentioned in Kausalya? Remember, despite being the eldest of the four sons, Rama goes to the forest and after his going away only, Dasharatha passes away. And the first, the son who performs the final rites for his father is Bharata. So, Puttrartha Karanat, if a son has to live and has to be dutiful to his father or mother, he has to perform the last rites. And this will be bestowed only on Kaikei's son and not Kaushalya's son. That is why he says, Kaikei's Chavasishtardam Dadau Puttrartha Karanat. So, he will only be a Putra later. Well, this was given to Kaikei. How much is remaining? 12.5. He could have given this to Kaushalya, made it 62.5 uh, overall for Kaushalya. But this he did not like Kaushalya so much. He liked only Kaikei. But he could not give Kaikei 50% because Kaikei is diet conscious. <laughs> she will tell this has so much of calories. Then what he did, he thought for some time, who to give this to? What I would have done, I would have consumed that poison. <laughs> Dasharatha thought for some time, what should I do? Look at the beauty. He waited for some time and gave that remaining portion of 12.5% to Sumitra. The shlokam goes, Pradadau chavasishtardham payasasyamrutopamam. Look at the words. He gave away the ambrosia of the remaining payasa. What is ambrosia of remaining payasa? I don't know how many of you have will manage to remember this. If the mothers would feed their children with curd rice or whatever, the last bit of that curd rice, the child will refuse to have. Because she has already fed the child with so much of food. But when the child refuses to have, the mother will say, see this will be very tasty. If you consume this, you will become like a little elephant. You remember? That, that is the only blessing of our mother which has turned true. <laughs> She would have dreamt of so many other things. So, she will give the remaining food. So, the last part of your tasty food is called Amritam. Payasasyam Rutopamam. It is equivalent to Ambrosia. And this was given to Anuchintya Sumitrayai Punareva Mahamatihi. The intellectual king, the intelligent king called as Dasharatha, Gave away the remaining payasam to Sumitra. Why did he give to Sumitra? Because, see, if the order of the payasam would determine the order of the birth of children, then how should the children have been born? First, Kaushalya was given. Rama should have been born. Next, Sumitra was given. Lakshmana should have been born. Next, Kaikeyi was given. Correct? In our payasam distribution. But it did not happen like that. Kai Rama was born. Bharata was born and later Lakshmana Shatrugna were born. Why? Because when Kaushalya was given the payasam, she consumed. The king noticed that. When Sumitra was given her 25%, she had to consume but she did not. The king was wondering why is she not consuming? After 12.5 was given to Kaikeyi, she consumed and after after Kaikei had consumed, Sumitra consumed. Why? Because Sumitra thought, if by chance my son is born elder to Kaikei's son, then he may lose the Kainkaryam, the, the fortune of serving that boy because he is born elder to him. 
So my children, son or sons, whoever is born, should end up serving the other children because serving devotees is more important than serving the Lord. So let me wait till Kaikeyi finishes and after Kaikeyi had finished, she consumed. That, that is when the king thought, with such a great quality in her, she should be the recipient for the remaining payasam also and gave away the remaining payasam. That is why two children who were born to her ended up serving the other two children. Rama was served by Lakshmana and Bharata was served by Shatrughna. One was a servant of the Lord and one was a servant of the devotee. Bhagavat Seshatvam and Bhagavata Seshatvam were a part of them. So this payasam had to be distributed. Now, before this, what had happened in Sri Vaikuntham? It is said that um, in the Karya Vaikuntham, all the devas had gathered and they prostrated at the lotus feet of the Lord and said that we have been tormented by the antisocial activities of Ravana and his brothers who have been stationed in Lanka. His brothers have been troubling the saints in Dandakaranyam as well. So you need to be born and you should vanquish them in the battle. The Lord said, don't worry, you have performed Sharanagati at my feet. Siddhagandharva Yakshastha Tatastvam Sharanam Gataha Tvam Gatif Paramadeva Sarvesham Nav Parantapa Don't worry, I will be born on earth. While I am being born, you Devas shall be born as monkeys and you shall be aiding me in the process of annihilating these demons. So Vayus Amshavataram was Hanuman, Agni's Amshavataram was Neela, Vishwakarma's Amshavataram was Nala, then uh, Indra's Amshavataram was um, Vali and Surya's Amshavataram was Sugriva. So all these monkeys were supposed to be born. And here, um, 12 months had passed away. Now well, they had turned pregnant and then after that 12 months it took for them to deliver. Is there a problem here? <laughs> Why? Because we, as far as we know, there are only three trimesters, 3 into 3, 9, 40 weeks. How can it be 12? Valid question. Now, how, what will some of the uh, answers that you will get? In those days, it was 12. Later, it, it has turned 9. This is how we will get answers. No. Ayurveda Shastram tells, the sperm that has to fertilize the ovum stays with the father for 3 months. So that sperm goes and fertilizes the ovum, which is for a period of 9, 3 trimesters, 3 into 3, 9. So this 3 months where the sperm is housed in the father, plus that 9 months makes it 12. Tatascha dvadashe maase chaitre navamiketi thau. So after 12 months comes the birth of Rama. Tatascha dvadashe maase chaitre navamiketi thau. Nakshatre adidide ivatye socha samsthe shupanchasu. Grahe shukarkate lagne vapata vinduna saha. Prodhyamane Jagannatham Sarvaloka Namaskritam Kausalya Janagadramam Divyalakshana Sayyudam Tatascha Dvadashe Maase After 12 months Chaitre in the month of Chaitra Navami Ketithau Tithi was Navami Nakshatre Aditi Devatye She was born in the constellation where Aditi rules, that constellation is called Punar Vasu. Vasu means wealth. Where those people who are born in the nakshatram of Punar Vasu will gain what they have lost as wealth. How many of you have Punar Vasu as your nakshatram? Any Punar Vasu stars here? If any of you have doubts that you may lose your phone or something, give it to him. <laughs> he will get it back because people who are born in Punar Vasu star will gain what they have lost. This is what Shastram tells Punar Vasu. Navami Tithi. People who are born in Navami Tithi have, will have one disadvantage, tells uh, Jyotish Shastram. They will leave some balance. That is why in Ramayanam, Rama will always leave one balance. If he fought Subahu and Maricha, he will kill Subahu and leave Maricha. 
If he fights the 14,000 demons in Janasthana, he will kill 13,999 demons and leave the one called Akampana. So it's called Slesha Bhavam. So every Tithi will have an advantage and disadvantage. Look at his Jatakam. You know, I don't know how many of you know. Our ancestors used to say, have Rama's Jatakam in your house. Here the Jatakam goes, Graheshu karkate lakne vakpata vindunasaha. How many, I don't know how many of you know Jatakam. There is something called Lagna Dhipati. From Lagnam you have to count. In Lagnam, Rama had Vakpata Vinduna Saha. So he had Vakpati and Indu. Vakpati is Brihaspati, Guru. And Indu, who is uh, Chandra. Chandra, Moon and Jupiter were in the same house. What is the problem in having Jupiter and Moon in the same house? Generally, they are not likable planets to each other because uh, don't think I'm talking in a very uh, crude language. Just to make us understand, it comes in Bhagavatam as, as well. Chandra has an illicit relationship with Brihaspati's wife Tara. And through that relationship is born a son called Buddha of the Navagrahas. Buddha is the son of Chandra, but his initial is B. Because he was, uh, he was treated as a son by Brihaspati. But originally he was a son of Chandra. So he, said he had to be C Buddha. But later Brihaspati out of magnanimity called him B Buddha. Okay. So Brihaspati and Chandra don't share a great relationship. But in the Jatakam, if Ketu is in a position, I hope I am not boring you. Ketu is in the position, if the twelfth or the second position is empty, in a Jatakam from Lagnam, then they will check for a yogam called as Kemadruma Yogam. Kemadruma Yogam in many cases can lead to separation of couples. So Rama had the twelfth place where it was Ketu. So because that house was not empty, uh, in Tamil it is called Mair Yedai. Just by a little chance, he there was no separation from his wife. But the inertia was there. That is why he had to be separated from his wife quite a few times in his life. Once in the exile, she was kidnapped. Second, while she was pregnant, she had to go to the forest. So this happened. So in Rama's Jatakam, there are five grahas in the exalted state. It is called Uchasthanam. So Pancha Uche Lokanayakaha, if in a Jatakam, if there are five grahas which are in an exalted state, then that person will become a world leader, tells Jyotishya Shastram. Pancha Uche Lokanayakaha. So, this is the position of Rama's Jatakam. Why did I discuss Rama's Jatakam? Because Jyotishya Shastram is extremely important in Sanatana Dharma. But not the way we perceive it today. Every day we are getting one phalan for our Rashi. Oh, the people of Dhanur Rashi, today your lucky number is 5. Lucky color is blue. That person will keep wearing blue. In Jyotishya Shastram, you cannot decide the fortune day after day. There is no provision in that. And you should not even research on your Jatakam unnecessarily. If you have no other work, Jatakam Timba, let us see. You should never research your Jatakam in those days. It used to be done either for performing a Yajnam or for marriage. That's all. You should not research your Jatakam like how we are researching it today. When the Guru Payarchi happens, when Shani Payarchi happens, the entire world will be looking to what is going to be the Palan. This is not the way that we have to look into Jyotishya Shastra. Well, Kaushalya gave birth to Rama. And uh, next star in Pushya Nakshatram. You know what is the great, anybody of Pushya Nakshatram here? Pushya Nakshatra, Pusam. Good Nakshatram it is. Huh? You know what is Pushya Nakshatram famous for? In Ayurveda Shastram it is said, if you have to administer medicine to a patient and if you don't have any time bound rules to administer, for example vaccines or anything or even some uh, 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 concoctions which are meant to boost your hum immunity if it is once a month, Ayurveda Shastram tells, take it on the day of Pushya Nakshatram. When you take it on the day of Pushya Nakshatram, the efficacy of the medicine is higher, says Jyotishya Shastram. That is why in Ayurveda Shastram, there is one 
vaccine or immunity drops called as Swarana Bindu Bashpam for small children that will be administered only on Pushya Nakshatram today. Next is Aslesha Nakshatram which is called Ayilyam which we often say is the star of the snakes. So Lakshmana and Shatrughna, the twins were born on Aslesha Nakshatram. As these children were born, Kausalya Yei, Narapatihi, Kausalya Janayadramam, Divya Lakshana Sayyutam. This little boy who was born was extremely handsome. He had Saundaryam and Lavanyam in him. Vasishtha was called and he was asked, please give the name to this child. He said, Rama. Ramo Vigrahavandav. Ramayatiti Ramaha. The moment you see him, you will fall in love with him. If you go to today, incidentally, I have visited this temple many a times. While I was going around, I was, of course, they said, each deity represents one famous Kshetram in Bharata Desha. Like for example, Lord Shiva comes from Ramanathapuram, Rameshwaram. Uh, uh, similarly, there is a Krishna who is very, very uh, similar, identical to Udupi, the Kshetram from Karnataka. There is Ananta Padmanabha Swami of Kerala. There is of course the very famous uh, Venkateshwara Swami of Tirumala Tirupati. I had Darshanam of all the deities. But you know which deity in my eyes resembled very close to the Kshetram? It was Bhadrachala Rama. He was very similar to how we see in Bhadrachalam. If you go to Bhadrachalam, you can see a similar Rama. If you just cut your eyes and position yourself on the banks of Godavari, you can very well sing Adi Go Bhadra Dri Gautami Idi Go Chudandi Anupamanamai Adi Sundaramai Dhanaru Chakra Mulu Dhaga Dhaga Mere Siddhi Adi Go Bhadra Dri Gautami Idi Go Chudandi Rama is Ramayati Idi Rama In Bharatanatya Shastram, when a dancer stands even if they are standing on the stage, they should not stand like one soldier. There is a form called as Tribhangam, where you will have to bend your hand, your knee and your foot in such a way that three parts of your body is bent. It's called as Tribhangam. If you see Rama in most of the Kshetrams, he will be in the Tribhanga Kolam. I don't know how many of you will want to visit India in a few months from now. Please do visit a Kshetram called Vadupur. In the state of Tamil Nadu, closer to Mayavaram and Mannargudi is a little hamlet called as Vadupur. Rama there is extremely beautiful. Well, there is another hamlet called as Tillai Vidaham. There also Rama is extremely beautiful. Very close to the capital of Chennai, is Madhurantakam, who is called Yeri Kattaraman, Karunakara, extremely beautiful. You go to Tanjavur, you will have a Kshetram of Rama called as Punnai Nallur, Shadagrama Trivini. He is extremely beautiful. In Karnataka, there is a small hamlet, again closer to Bangalore. It is called as Hire Magaluru. Hire Magaluru, Chikka Magaluru. There are two cities. So, Hire Magaluru Rama is extremely pretty. Why to leave Kerala? Beautiful Kshetram close to Trishur is called Triprayar. So Triprayar is a Kshetram where the great Singali Paramanantrama Dikshitar has performed a mandalam of Ramayanam there. Of course, there is Bhadrachalam. So wherever Rama is found, Ramayati Iti Ramaha. There are many other Kshetrams. Extremely beauty. Ramayati Iti Ramaha Kalyanana, Nidhanam, Kalimathamathanam, Pavanam, Pavananam. So the name Rama was given. Next. To Kaikeyi's son, Kaikeyi asked, Vasishta, what name are you going to give to my son? Bharataha Rajya Bharana, the one who is going to support the kingdom, bear the kingdom, is called as Bharata. In reality, did he bear the kingdom? The kingdom was given to him, like on a golden platter you give it to someone. But what did he say? I will not rule Ayodhya. My brother Rama has to come and rule. I will not run this kingdom. So even when the kingdom was given to him, he did not rule. But what does his name state? Bharataha Rajya Bharanar. He took the burden of supporting his kingdom. No. Then what did he support? There is a beautiful reference in Ayodhya Kandam. Please listen to this. In Ayodhya Kandam, 
Shatrughna pulls Mantara in front of Bharata and says, Bharata, for all the anguish that we are suffering, this lady who has come from Afghanistan is the problem. Because she belonged to KK Desham, which is Afghanistan. So this lady has come and caused all the atrocities that we are bearing. I said, how do you blame her? It is because of her. She brainwashed your mother Kai Kai and that is why we are all bearing the brunt of her atrocities. No Shatru Ghana. Manthara Kuni is not the cause. Yeah, you are right, my dear brother Bharata. It is not she who is the cause. Your mother Kai Kai listened to the words of Manthara. Your mother is the cause. <laughs> my mother Kai Kai is not the cause Shatru Ghana. Well, yes, your mother is not the cause because your mother did state that she wanted you to rule Ayodhya and Rama to go to the forest. Where did the intellect of our dear father Dasharatha go? Dasharatha is at fault. Dasharatha is not the at fault at, at fault at all, Shatruguna. Yeah, yeah, it must be our brother Rama. Just because our father said you have to go to the forest, he went. He should have sued our father to drag him to the courts. No, Rama is not at fault. If Manthara is not at fault, if Kaikeyi is not at fault, if uh, Dasharatha is not at fault, if Rama is not at fault, who has committed the mistake? Shatrugna. If Bharata, a person called Bharata did not exist, all these things wouldn't have happened. So it is me who is the cause of all of this. Naneda Naidaga. So Bharata bore the burden of a mistake that he had not committed. So he was called Bharata. Then the other two sons were Sumitra. Sumitra was wanting that she had, she had to have the names of her sons out of servitude. That is when he said, Lakshmano Lakshmi Sampanna. This boy will be the richest of all. Who? Lakshmana. 14 years he was in the forest. What richest? He was sweeping, mopping, washing the utensils, cooking. Lockdown, no lockdown, it didn't make any difference to him. What wealth did he have? Kainkariya Lakshmi. He had the wealth of serving Rama. To him that was wealth. Shatrugna, Nitya Shatrugna, the one who has won over enemies. Shatrugna did not take part in any yuddha. He is called Shatrugna. In Chennai, the person will be called Kannairam. So he the father would have christened his son out of great love that he will have for Rama and Ramayana. But that person will have no belief in Rama. He is Yen Ram. So so names may not have any link to that person at all. Here the names were given. Now they had to make the children sleep. Kaushalya was nowhere close to music. She did not know what is Kalyani and what is Bhairavi. For her all swaras were the same. See, for some of them may not enjoy music. If you tell, they did one beautiful graha bedam here, went into Yaman and came outside. How did they go and come out? So she was extremely talented in outsourcing it. She outsourced it to two gentlemen. One was Tyagaraja Swami and second was Kulashekhara Pirumal. Manapugal Kausalaitan Manivair Vaitavane Tenilangai Kormudigai Sindh Vittashem Punsher Kanninanma Amadil Pudaishur Kana Puratin Karmani Yenudaya Yinamude Raghavane Talelo Navamohana Ulaina Surasa Tulu Vivara Muga Padaga 
भाग्यमा नवरत्न मंडप मुन त्याग राज विनुत हृदय भूनि न श्री राम उइया ललूगवैया सो दिस इज हाउ दे पुट रामा टू स्लीप तुलसीदास describes how the ranis used to run after this their children kilagi kilagi uthat dhaya girat bhumi lat pataya dhaya mat god let dasharath ki raniya thumak chalat ram chandra बाजत पे ठुमक चलत सो द चाइल्डहुड ऑफ रामा रामा वाज बॉर्न लक्ष्मणा वाज बॉर्न शत्रुघ्ना वाज बॉर्न भरता वाज बॉर्न भट्टद्री इन श्रीमद नारायणीय समराइज दिस गीर्वाणी रथ्यमानो दश मुख निधनम कोसलेश वृष्य श्रृंगे ुभुक्वाधुषिदशरथक्ष्मे and then we'll have tataka vadam subahu vadam maricha will be driven away ahalyo dharanam dhanur bhedam and then sita kalyanam i will say that rama was 12 years of age there is one beautiful name title in tamil these days nadivil konjam pakkatta what happened in the middle he was born today tomorrow 12 years you are not describing what happened between that because there is nothing worthwhile to describe why because rama was extremely obedient to his parents when you have obedient children you will not have memories at all <laughs> only when you have disobedient children parents and the teachers will remember that child for eternity if you are an obedient ch- child no teacher will remember only if you are disobedient you are troubling your ch- teachers the teacher will remember you weren't you from the 95 batch who caused you that is why in bhagavatam in krishna avataram between his birth and his age of 12 we will have vaputana uh, vadam shakata asura bhanjanam kaliya nartanam govardhano dharanam rasa krida killing of kamsa lift everything will happen by the age of 12 here if you check rama very obedient you know tomorrow when we meet the first shlokam in ramayana is father was worried that his son was not married darak kriyam prati he was not worried that my son is not married son was at the age of 12 father is worrying my son is not married that is when vishwamitra comes vishwamitra comes and asks what why are you worried my son is not married how will he get married what is the greatness of your son he listens to his parents then he will never get married aapka maate chala kya karte the inhe kalyan aao so that is when he takes him on the sixth day so journey to the forest to kill tataka and so on so that somewhere his curriculum by days get, gets filled and <laughs> killed tataka gave a halyo dharana madhavis what was his only advantage listening to his parents that is a big disadvantage so Ramayana begins after Rama was at the age of twelve. Bhagavatam gets completed by Krishna at the age of twelve. So this is how the difference that we see. The other difference is, see when a leaf is laid traditionally, you will have sambar, which is kolamb coming first. Then you will have rasam or saru or shatramad coming next. After that, what will come? You have to leave, sir. मलयालम 
treat the utterings of two people as sacrosanct. One is that of a parrot and the other is that of little children. In Tamil there is a saying, little children never speak lies. It's what they believe. I don't know, Kaliyugam, that may also change. But now, little children and parents, when they utter something, treat that as the ultimate truth, is a saying in Malayalam. Who utters Ramayanam, Lava and Kusha as children, sing what has been composed by their teacher, Valmiki, in front of Rama's eyes. Children utter. So, children, if they speak, that is the truth. So, Ramayanam spoken by the children, Lava and Kusha, is the truth. Who utters Bhagavatam? Shuka Brahmam, who is a parrot. So, parrot utters Bhagavatam, which is the truth. Children utter Ramayanam, which is the truth. Here is Payasam, here is Masrila Kabadam. Here it begins after 12, here it com gets completed before 12. One is by Vasishtha, the other is by his great great grandson called as Shuka Vyasam. Vasishtha Naptaram, Shaktev Pautram, Parasharatmajam, Shukatatam. If Vyasa is the great grandson of Vasishtha, Shuka is the great great grandson of Vasishtha. So Vasishtha starts Ramayanam, Shuka completes this loop with Bhagavatam. This is a Navaham and this is a Saptaha. So this is how comparisons are made by our Acharyas. Tomorrow, See, in the span of 24,000 shlokas of Ramayanam, 24,000 shlokas, 7 cantos, Balakandam, Ayodhya Kandam, Aranya Kandam, Kishkinda Kandam, Sundara Kandam, Yuddha Kandam, Uttara Kandam, 7 cantos, 24,000 shlokas. The Paddhati followed in uh, Pravachanam is, we stop with Ramapattabhishekam, which comes close to the 21st thousand. Uh, we stop. Not that the next 3000 should not be read, but we Indians love only happy endings in the movies. The hero should get together with the heroine and then we have to put Vanakkam, Namaste, Shubham. We don't like tragic ends. But the truth is we have to accept Ramayana the way it is. But in Pravachanam, the Paddhati is I have to stop with Rama Pattabhishekam, which is the 21st thousand. Today, how much have I completed? Close to 800 verses. So, I am left with uh, 20,200 verses because the next 1,700 verses will get completed tomorrow with Sita Kalyanam. Then Ayodhya Kandam, what happened in that one week? Rama's before birth, birth, boyhood, marriage till the age of 24. 24 years, 2,200 shlokas. What happened in one week? When the Pattabhishekam had to happen and it didn't happen, 5,500 shlokas. So look at the emotion that will emotions that will run in Ayodhya Kandam that will be in day 3 and day 4. Chitrakuta Gamanam and Paduka Pattabhishekam. So Ramayana is a journey. The moment you start traveling with the speaker and with the content in Ramayana, you will feel as if the incidents are happening right in front of your eyes. And those few moments when you imagine and when you create that canvas in front of you will aid, will help in pushing away the worries that we have in our current life. That is why in those days, how many ever times you listen, you still keep listening to Ramayana and Bhagavatam. As you listen, you get cleansed and you feel that there are many answers to the questions that have been pondering you for years together that you will receive in the due course of the lecture. So tomorrow, same time between 3 and 5 p.m. I shall be rendering Sita Kalyanam lecture. Generally, uh, uh, in those days, speakers used to give this as a USP for any Kalyanam lecture. Those of you who have children who want to get married, please bring them to the lecture. I don't tell any of these things these days because they have the right to make their own choices. Let them decide. And don't, even if they have the intent of coming, the moment you say this, they won't come. <laughs> so, bring them to this lecture if you feel that they have the patience to sit for a two hours plus lecture. Because 120 minutes, you have to keep looking at a not so great person on the stage. There is no visual treat waiting here for you. All you are just listening. So, this requires a lot of patience from your side, which I can see, which is housed in the all of you. 
If you feel that there are some homo, homo sapiens around you who have similar patients, please do bring them for the lecture tomorrow as well. From Monday, the lecture will be between 7 and 9 p.m. to aid those people who are working, who can come even in the late night and listen. Kavitarkika Simhaya Kalyana Gunasharine Srimate Venkateshaya Vedanta Guravera Mahas Pastiv Prajabhya Pariparayantam Yayena Margena Mahin Mahishaha Gopramhane Pheshubham Astunityam Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Kayena Vacha Manasendriyeva Budhyatmanaba Prakriti Swabhava Karobi 